Alright guys, such a here and today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with Toronto Ultra walking away with an absolutely dominant tournament victory here in Boston. Optic didn't get the chance to play the champions because they lost a phase on both times of asking. Shotzi has responded to his performance individually this weekend, saying there should be much more to come from Optic when Major 2 starts to kick off and get underway. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. This performance from Toronto this weekend, nothing short of remarkable, it's got to be said. The way they dominated all the hard points, all the the search and destroys. The only maps they lost the entire tournament were both to phase, once in the winners finals, once in the grand finals, both on invasion control, which is, you know, not the worst map I don't think in the game. It's kind of a frustrating one to watch literally every single series as it seemed to be this past weekend, but it's probably not the best map, but literally everything else they won. Kleenex was given the MVP as well. Finals MVP was undisputedly inside. I don't think anyone is denying that in literally every single game mode, but um, Kleenex over the course of the tournament was just masterful as usual. I think that he did deserve it, right? Because I think there's been a few occasions where Kleenex says, you know, maybe should have got the MVP or should have been close to it. Didn't happen. And as I said before, Kleenex with a 0.95 is an impact level of like 1.1 or whatever. This is just hypothetical numbers. If Kleenex has like a 1.2, then his impact is the highest in the league by some margin, I would say. Just the pace he plays at. But it's, you know, it's not also just the pace, right? He knows when to slow down a little bit. He actually uses an MC W quite a lot this year sometimes and I think there's a lot to learn for like the other more aggressive SMGs you're talking shots you're talking abusing even from the way that Kleenex is currently playing the game so I think that's certainly one to look out for as things go forward obviously Skump giving congrats to the entire team Flux of course and um, even Joe Cod like we saw Joe Piddington this weekend on well it was only in that scrap video when he was like doing the dance when the winners finals were going on or the losers finals during Optigan phase then we saw um, you know Ginger Joe Pennington in that shot as well. Draza not so happy with the result for FaZe. Back to back seconds at Boston, of course. Last year he was on Los Angeles Thieves when they lost in the grand finals with Envoy, of course, who managed to get his trade, as he says, because he lost in the finals last year on a brand new, yeah, completely different team. This year, brand new team for him, and he wins the finals. And this is the thing with Envoy, right? Like he's been on these, I don't exactly want to say content organizations, but he's been on Optic, been on Thieves. You know, they're more inclined to that side of things. I think Envoy is the type of player he wants to turn up play cod and just win championships and well he's doing a rather good job of exactly that not like ultra don't make content and are not an entertaining team because they are and you know their content if they did make more stuff would do well because they win that's actually how it works an envoy now ties priester with the most land victories in cdl history he's now a six-time champion gotta say it's kind of remarkable how after he left optic you know he'd won what a couple of home series i guess with um with the chicago huntsman but you know, he left those guys and over the last couple of years has won you know, multiple land championships, including the World Championship. He's now doing it again. You know, Scrap's now got his second win. Insight with his fourth. Clinics with his fifth. And sure, some of these are online cheese. You know, Trods World J in a home series 2020, Major 2 2021. That was online. So the lands that they won, Kickoff Classic 2022, Major 3 2023, and now Major 1 2024. So there's definitely a trend, it seems, here with Toronto. They've won a fair bit over the CDL era, but there feels to be a trend towards greater and greater success. And I'm not really sure I see too many signs of it slowing down. The level that Toronto played at this tournament, I don't know if I've ever seen a level of COD that high this early in the season. You sometimes see teams play that well at champs, right? End of the season. That can happen. But to play that well, that coherently, that consistently, Event one, I think, is incredibly rare. And look, we're going to talk about phase later on today and the fact that they've got second again. But I'm not sure that anybody was going to be able to compete with Ultra in this tournament and in that grand finals because they were just way ahead of the game in basically every single regard. And it's tough for Hixie, obviously. He was dropped for the team. People are going to call it, you know, packer punching. And it's obviously tough for those guys. But the reality is, it's true. Right? Envoy came in, did the job that was expected of him. And once he started to deliver that on a more consistent basis, Ultra worked entirely untouchable this past weekend in basically every single regard. Now there's plenty else to discuss though, including this from Jake Hale. So this has been doing the rounds this weekend. To my knowledge he says, Call of Duty League employees both at home and in Boston are still unaware of whether they'll remain employed following the major as Activision's layoff continued to loom. So this was a big talking point the other day with all the big layoffs going on right now in esports in general, in gaming in general, in tech in general to be perfectly honest. Microsoft have come through. Microsoft 
Microsoft Activision, merger, acquisition, whatever, it's always going to cause an array of layoffs. Now, those layoffs seem to be trickling down to the esports divisions as well with the Call of Duty League. To my understanding, based on conversations I had last night, many of the employees, basically all of the employees, don't know as of last night whether they are employed today. And maybe this morning they will know, having checked their emails, whether they still have employment or not. This is not just the Call of Duty League employees working from home, but this is also those live there in Boston, as Jake Hal says, and also all of the talent. I don't know if it applies to all of the talent but lots of the talent this applies to when they this could have been their last event so expect to see some potential responses to this over the coming days hopefully it still works out for all parties and everyone can continue as normal but the reality is often that works with budget cuts or whatever esports winter and the state of the league in general this might potentially get pretty ugly over the coming days. And also, let's be honest, the league can't afford to lose any of its uh, prized assets at the moment. It's already running, some would argue, a bit of a skeleton crew situation. So to drop down even further would be, yeah, not optimal at all. So that's just one to keep your eyes on over the coming days. Definitely wishing the best for all parties involved. Before we talk about the optic thing, I've got to mention invasion control because, I don't know, if you guys play ranked on this map, my strat is always just rush A and try and get some ticks. I don't really know why the teams took this long Long to figure out that that was the strat because I think most of the teams like historically on invasion control when it had a 17% offense win rate earlier on the season would just go B and then have an incredibly impossible time to get A maybe get a tick or two and then chalk it up nowadays teams usually on their offense are trying to lean A at the start get a tick or two then get B which is easy to get and then you know try and close out A at some point it's still definitely defensive favored no doubt but invasion offense wins are possible and it was kind of cool to see teams figure it out this weekend I kind of I wish we saw more high rise i kind of wish we saw more karachi because invasion control is a bit of an eyesore i've got this like when you see so much invasion i think it does get a bit too much but um at least invasion hard points well it might be gone because they've changed the spawns in the new update and they've changed them quite substantially so that's one thing i'm really looking forward to seeing here after this major is over which it is because now the new spawns are in play the new patch update the pros will go to just like the challenges have been playing which is well good and bad in many respects i'm sure so this past weekend we we saw Optic play FaZe again for another couple of times. They played them online, lost. They played them twice this weekend, lost on both occasions. And I think it's an interesting result for Optic because they come out of this weekend. I'm sure that if you'd have told them they'd place top three behind Ultra and FaZe going into the tournament, they would have said, you know what, fair enough. That's a respectable placing given, you know, wherever they feel like they're probably somewhat behind at the moment compared to where they might need to be. And I will say there's also rumors going around that FaZe and Ultra are slamming like everyone in practice. Like they are the two best teams by a margin over literally everybody else apparently in practice right now. And Ultra are clearly a level even then above phase. But I think that's the concern for Optic, right? You come out of this tournament having, you know, pretty resoundingly been defeated on both occasions. Sure, the game five against phase in the first series they played could have gone Optic's way, but, um, you know, their search and destroy straight up wasn't good enough. They lost, of course, the search and destroy again here pretty emphatically in on the invasion search and destroy here in the actual deciding series. They did win the, the invasion control. They lost both hard points on this occasion. You can't expect to always beat phase in the hard points even though teams were, to be fair, making a habit out of doing that this past weekend. But I think the issue is for Optic is that they're clearly a level behind FaZe, definitely in Search and Destroy, and, you know, just on the whole as well, in terms of teamwork and other factors, they seem a level behind. FaZe really... It didn't look that competitive this series, to be honest, apart from, of course, the Optic victory in the control. But then Toronto kind of did the same, if not even worse, back to FaZe. So it's not like Optic can say, well, you know, we lost a couple of times to FaZe, who we've typically beaten over the last few years, but whatever, it's okay. That's the best team. That ain't the best team, right? You're significantly behind FaZe, and FaZe is significantly behind Ultra, based on the evidence we saw yesterday. So it's not the end of the world at all. And New York are kind of, well, they're in a very interesting spot. I'm sure we'll discuss them over the coming days whether they can climb the ranks of, to get back to where they need to be. But Optic, you know, comfortably third best team as it stands, which is fine, but, you know, you want to win. And I think that everybody who watched that grand final saw what it's going to take to beat Toronto this year, and it's going to be a lot. Teams will do it, you know, it's going to happen. The league is too competitive for other teams to not win events this season. And I think that Optic are quite well positioned to win something, but they do have some problems to solve. These are the numbers, just overall major one, plus the qualifiers, just to see how things are kind of ticking over at the moment. Prid's been their, you know, arguably their best player. You can probably argue Kenny's been their best player just in terms of like MVP impact, com 
bombs, you know, turnarounds, clutch factor even as well, you could argue, and things like this. But Pred's been very good as well. But it was always the question, could Pred and Schotzi get on the same page? We've seen it sometimes, but I don't think we've seen it nearly consistently enough. And Schotzi this past weekend was probably the one under the spotlight the most. In the big series they played, he didn't really deliver at all. Compared to, for example, the likes of, you know, Kleenex on the Toronto Ultra, who kind of plays in Schotzi's role, there's a significant difference in impact there was this past weekend. And, you know, a fair few mistakes from Schotzi that you've got to point out. You know, the ego Charles are back in business. I don't exactly know what the solution here is going to be for Optic, but there's definitely something to think about. There was, of course, a response. Kenny took some responsibility for playing badly in the series against FaZe, the deciding one, which was true, but, you know, it is going to happen occasionally. Like, Insight did not have a great series, I didn't think, really, against FaZe in the winner's finals. But all of his other teammates played well. They bailed him out in some respects. And then in the finals, he massively took over and won them the game and won them the actual tournament itself. So it happens when you're, one of your teammates might have a bad series. You need the other guy to step up that wasn't really the case maybe and there's an argument to say that you know Shotzi's play style requires Kenny to play well and get a load of kills because Kenny's like the aggressive AR Dashi is not doing nothing but you know he is the hill kitten pretty much nowadays right he has stepped into that octane role in some respects where he just gets the hill time and maybe that's fine but maybe that's absolutely not fine at all and there's people making a good case that dashi needs to play like scrappy you know you look at that team dashi is playing like insight right now whereas maybe dashi given his skill and his talent and the ability that he has to do this, let's not forget, you know, Maddox Dashi is probably the best version of Dashi we have seen back in Black Ops 4, that maybe he should start to play the more aggressive role and, you know, become that faster paced member of the team. Shotzi says, didn't play like myself this weekend, which is an interesting um, kind of explanation, I guess. It's, well, look, they play online so far this season. This is LAN. It's a little bit different. We've always talked about it, right, that Shotzi's play style can struggle somewhat more on LAN and online, so maybe that's the difference in between how he thinks he can play and how he did play this past weekend. But, um, yeah, lots to think about for them it's as I say it's not the end of the world at all I mean a top three finish is is pretty good but um it's not good enough for where these guys want to be and not good enough especially in terms of the actual manner of the tournament and the way that it concluded for where they're trying to get to Pred though had a 1.26 this tournament which um is right up there this is optic debut tournament um KDs Dashi dominates this stat back in Las Vegas 2019 but it was actually in December 2018 1.44 Pred though ties second with Zinni with a 1.26 Kenny's on here as well and many other examples so Pred had a great tournament but it just wasn't enough in the end this also the final prizing I know that X mentioned this on the flank last night the fact that I thought there was $500,000 on the line again for the majors this year it's only $375,000 which again indicates what I'm saying earlier about the talent and these other guys that um you know the budgets from up high are not necessarily what they could or should be and it seems to also be affecting the prize money for the teams which is pretty bad when you've had one less major, to be honest. These are the overall standings, though, as we presently look at it. Ultra number one. I will also mention, just as I kind of skim over this, 31 in 8 map win loss for Ultra. Like, this is some Cold War phase level stuff at the moment for these guys. And, you know, three of those came to Boston in a hot 3-0. A Boston team that are absolutely, pretty much, dead last in the standings right now. So very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.